So we are pretty prompt. Um, and today we're going to be talking to you a little bit about um, our experience with LLMs in production versus development. Um, and I think it might be best to start with who you know how we built this and where we uh, where we kind of started. Uh, so just a quick intro, everybody. So my name is Eli. I'm co-founder and CEO, and I'm Charlie, the CTO. Uh, Charlie's the genius, by the way. So all the questions point to Charlie. I will smile. Uh, but basically, pretty prompt is Grammarly for prompting. Uh, anybody here has used Grammarly before? Hands up. I love Grammarly. Now they changed name. They are superhuman. We still call them Grammarly because it's good for marketing. So Grammarly is this Chrome extension that improves your text for grammar. We basically do the same, but for prompting. And we take your prompts and as you type, we have a Chrome extension. You just hit tab and it improves your prompt inside ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, or wherever you are. Uh, and it's super, super uh, fast to use. We'll actually do a little demo in the end of the presentation. Um, and a nice uh, phrase that actually Charlie said once to me is, uh, no matter how many GPUs you have, without context, going back to the context of augment code, uh, the output won't be what you need. So the way that we see pretty prompt is that we are solving not just for improving your prompt, but actually to become the context layer before you prompt wherever you prompt. So in the same way as you have Grammarly working in all your inputs, as we move to the AI world where everything starts with a prompt, we want to be the context layer that improves in context to what you are doing and who you are, uh, that prompt to get what you need from it. Does it make sense? Yeah, great. Uh, and you have all the nice logos that we are integrated slash integrating as we go. Uh, now, how far along are we? Uh, we actually started working together just another two years ago. Uh, we were building a different product called Dolphin AI, and we pivoted to Pretty Prompt about four or five months ago. We actually launched on Charlie's birthday. Yep. Uh, we forgot we were launching. And since then, we have now over 10,000 users, people from companies like Wix, LinkedIn, Upwork, hopefully after today's Stripe. Uh, we've processed over 200 million tokens in the last 90 days only. So some of what we're talking today about using LLMs in production is from what we learned from this. Um, by the way, 220 million tokens means, and I have it here, is about doing two over 2 million tokens per day or 93,000 per hour for 24 hours a day for 90 days. So to understand the scale of what we are doing as a very small startup is pretty impressive. Um, we've improved over 150,000 prompts. It grows every day inside the tools that you know. Um, now, why did we decide to work on this, Charlie? Yes. Yeah, so, so we kind of launched on Product Hunt a couple of a uh, couple of months ago, and um, the initial launch was great. But the thing that really worked well for us was things like uh, social media. So, organic TikToks. Um, we actually hooked up our analytics to uh, Slack via Posthog and got kicked out of Slack. Uh, for 24 hours. They have rate limits, uh, which was interesting to find out. And careful what you track as soon as you launch. If anybody, any founders here, some founders, great. Any software developers at early stage startups? Great. Everybody's an enterprise here. Great. Uh, but yeah, so there are, there are uh, you can get kicked out of your Slack, essentially. And I, I think the thing that really... Uh, forced us to kind of work on this was uh, we actually had users asking to pay, which sounds silly, but it's it's a really big thing in startups. Um, and it's on the next one. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, so this is the real email. Yes. Yeah, so so we got an email from a user saying, um, uh, please, can I pay? Um, and this is where Stripe comes into it. Um, we needed a payment provider. Uh, we've used Stripe previously, and they were the, they were the best uh, Best people, uh, best people we knew to integrate. And, and by the way, we we did almost the opposite to what people say. Think on your market and think on the big tool and build this big amazing stuff. And we actually did the opposite. We were building this big platform. We thought before with Dolphin AI that didn't work out, and we pivoted to this small tool that looks like a toy rather than a platform. It looks something that you wouldn't think is important, but we were using it internally. And we just launched. There was no paywall, like Charlie said. 
But after this, that's an indication that, uh, you know, that something has to happen. Yep, so our basic Stripe integration, you've probably seen this a million times. Uh, we just simply hooked up to a webhook. It called our Superbase Edge function, and we didn't even have any tiers. Like if you went onto our, um, if you went into the application code, you could actually switch yourself onto a premium <laughs> user, um, which uh, surprisingly no one did, uh, which was nice. And now we change it, by the way, so don't go and try it. I know that there are lots of developers here. Uh, but yeah, it was quite interesting. I, I think that what we learn is don't try to optimize for something that might not have the right to exist in the first place. Yep. And I think it's really important to earn the right to integrate Stripe. And we earn the right by a customer asking to integrate, essentially. So that's a really big learning point for us. Uh, oh, um, So something that uh, we talk a lot about internally just before we get into the LLMs. I hope that you're still awake. And if not, you will wake up with this one, is that we think of startups like this. This is literally a series of levels with a big boss in the end that you need to win. And that's for us how we see overcoming each of the thresholds or the layers of building a company for us. Uh, and only to realize that after you win this level, you just need to go to another castle to rescue that princess again because it's not actually when you won. So it's kind of like one layer after another layer after another layer, layer in the same way as we think about context, we think about startups. Yeah. Oh, there's, yeah, it's okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, so we also uh, went through a bit of uh, strike pricing experimentation. Uh, we didn't know how to uh, price our first, uh, first kind of tiers. Um, so we're still... Going through this, uh, interestingly, we had annual pricing and that kind of uh, hit off, which we were surprised at. 22% of users today from Pretty Prompt are annual, which is a huge amount for us. It's really, really amazing. Uh, as a small startup, that cash flow is huge. Um, yeah. So just to go back to what we were talking, that, that is who we are. Um, and uh, some of the things we have learned in the last maybe four months building sort of LLMs in production. You usually get a lot of great demos from OpenAI, Claude, uh, but when they really, when you use these APIs in the real world, uh, they tend to break. Um, we've kind of come up with a couple of things. If we were to build something again, we would go through these uh, kind of one by one and make sure almost like a production checklist. Um, observability is probably the number one thing. Um, if you don't know what your LLMs are doing, uh, it's kind of like flying a plane without any instruments in the dark. Um, you want to keep a lid on costs. You want to keep the latency low. And uh, some really interesting observability really helps us with debugging. Um, Something interesting there with debugging is that we are a team of a super technical person and a semi-technical person. With observability, everybody in the team becomes uh, with the ability to debug because it has the tools to go in and understand what's happening. That makes you faster. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the main providers, their default analytics uh, aren't too great, uh, mainly because they don't have an incentive uh, for you to uh, get down to that those granular details. Um, interesting thing we, we, we have found, uh, when you are programming, usually with functions, you have a deterministic output. Um, this is something kind of new, uh, that was new to us. Uh, the outputs are usually stochastic. So uh, you need some kind of structure. You need a JSON coming out of these. And uh, this is where we always use sort of structured outputs or function calling, keep sort of typing consistency throughout your code base. Uh, the error handling is a big one. Um, so something we realized is when big companies do a release, and this is just what we've found in, in the last couple of months, when they do a big release. Uh, they Nano Banana, to, for example. Exa yeah, Nano Banana is a really good example. Uh, Google had a spike in 500 errors. So uh, they will tend to fail a lot, uh, especially if you don't have big SLAs uh, with, uptime, uh, uh, with uptime guarantees and you're a small little startup. Um, you are always going to have to have a backup provider. So whether you're going to open AI and then falling back to Claude um, tends to be uh, the, best, uh, the best approach. Um, languages is an interesting one. Um, we went, I suppose, semi-viral in South Korea. Uh, a load of people 
posted a TikTok of us in South Korea, and suddenly our post-hog uh, analytics uh, shot to the sky of South Korean prompts. And the interesting thing is a lot of these language models, they're great at Latin-based languages, but when you when you go into more kind of, uh, whether it's Korean, whether it's Russian, uh, the prompt that's coming in, you want that to be in the same language as the prompt coming out. Um, to fix this, we had to kind of build our own internal language uh, translator module. Um, this was, it was an interesting task because uh, we assumed the translation would be perfect uh, and it simply wasn't. Uh, and I love it because some users are like, yay, it just works. And just, you know, guys, there's nothing just works in tech. Yeah. Just, someone makes it work. Uh, and we actually built that translation model on, on the last event here at Stripe. Uh, they had a great uh, build day and we were in the hall just next door here. Charlie was coding and we were just finishing that translator mode. Yeah. Um, caching, um, caching was a big one. Um, when you're in, uh, when you're developing, uh, you'll always want to be sort of caching your language models. Uh, this keeps the lid on costs, uh, keeps sort of, uh, again, the latency quite low. Uh, when you are developing, you're probably refreshing your development environment multiple times. You don't want to be keep calling those language models every single time. Um, and then finally, uh, the rate limiting. Uh, the rate limits are a big thing. So if you, you're using an API, so if you get a load of 49s from uh, Google, from Claude, wherever, uh, those are going to be distributed towards all your users if you're using a single API key. So uh, we would take the rate limits onto ourselves. So we use things like Upstash. Uh, there's loads of other uh, providers that do great, uh, great stuff for it. Um, and on this note, uh, something that we also learned that works is streaming. Yes, uh, streaming is a really interesting thing. So uh, if you're sending a something straight to, say, Gemini or OpenAI, uh, the standard uh, practice is, you know, you send the API, you get something back. But if the if you're sending too many tokens, um, the response might time out. And, you know, Google is going to give really super helpful responses, like an error occurred, and you can do <laughs> absolutely We nothing. should have added the screenshot can, of yeah, that, because like, you have no idea what happened. Absolutely nothing with that. Um, so... Streaming has really helped us because that's given us a response straight away. And you, as long as you're keeping kind of the window open, you can uh, stream back the uh, response. Um, so to kind of uh, kind of go back over observability, having analytics for your LLMs so you know what's going on under the hood. Non-deterministic outputs means you know every single API call to LLMs in our code base is now structured output. Uh, error handling, these providers will fail and it will always be at the worst possible time when you were doing a demo. So <laughs> I hope that <laughs> I hope, <laughs> hopefully it'll work. Uh, language is uh, it, it's probably going to be fixed by these models later down the line. Uh, but right now we've found Latin-based languages are more reliable than non-Latin-based languages. So if you, uh, so, so you'd have to account for that. Uh, and then the caching is uh, great for development. It's just uh, been one of the biggest lifesavers for us. And finally, with the rate limiting, uh, you want to kind of take this onto yourself so you're not kind of 49 into oblivion. Um, yeah, and with that, with that, we can do a little demo and show you what we're building. <laughs> is it okay? Also, just before that, you, yeah, you feel free to clap, no problem. We get excited, energized. Please scan the code. It's a freemium model. We're not here to sell, but try it out and tell us what you don't like because that's the best way for us to yes. get closer to product market fit. So it doesn't work on the phone, by the way. So no complaints. Yes. yes. I know. I know what you're going to say. So meanwhile, Charlie is going to change the window and we're going to go to the Chrome extension and show you how it works. And hopefully it will work and LLMs won't fail today. Mm -hmm. Has been pretty good. So let's see. Any questions, by the way, meanwhile? Let's see. Uh, okay. One question while Charlie, uh, wait, one second, Charlie. Yeah. Does pretty prompt only work in the browser or does it, for example, also integrate into CLI with Cloud Code? That's a great question. Um, 
I think right. it's the most re requested yeah, yeah, yeah. feature. So it's been the most, well, actually desktop has been the most requested feature. So right now we, because uh, we was about four months ago. We wanted to start kind of small and niche. Uh, and we use a lot of Chrome extensions. And we thought, you know, we use Chrome. Let's build an extension and uh, take, take the concept to Chrome extension users. Um, and we've had really good response. And because of that, people have asked, oh, yeah, can you do it on a desktop? Um, I've wanted it in Cursor uh, and now Augment Code, which <laughs> I'm going to switch to. <laughs> um, so uh, not yet, but um, yeah, we, we are definitely, uh, it's on the roadmap. Definitely, definitely we'll work so, on that. Uh, so yeah, so we are showing you literally one second as it starts from a new user. So there is no Chrome extension. Charlie has just added it to the browser. You will see that it pops up for the first time. And let's just try a simple prompt. Say, help me make, write me a marketing plan for Stripe. Dev rel a new blog, let's say, or new YouTube channel. Let's see, because you guys have the most amazing. Can you send me the output for this, please, when you're done? <laughs> so just one second. So before we send it off to ChatGPT, so like you can see, this is the tool, by the way. It's, a, it's super fast, the time to value. It literally took 20 seconds from writing the prompt to running the prompt to improving it. And just before we do a refine, you will see that we break down the prompt into the different sections, like the role, the task, parameters, constraints, etc. All the things that no one wants to write because we are all lazy people, uh, or at least people might not know that they need to write. Actually, it's really important when you're creating content, when you're building products, when you're vibe coding. It's really, really important so that you don't, first of all, overspend your money and credits, and second, you get what you need to do and you save the, the time. Uh, so, yeah. Yep. Uh, so we have like two, two formats, improve and refine. Um, they're still, still very early, but uh, we're making, I think, good progress. So <laughs> wait, before we choose so, the options, so yep. the improvement is essentially a one shot. It improves whatever you write based on what we think it's the needed kind of like improvement or extension. Refine takes it a step further, which breaks down what you wrote and further ask questions to clarify context that you've missed. If we are going to be a context layer, we need to understand what the user didn't write. So for example, uh, who is the target audience for the Strive Del, uh, DevRel new YouTube channel? We didn't write that. Uh, and for example, what type of content is going to be featured in this DevRel channel? So we select these options and then submit the answers and send it to Ben to use with DevRel YouTube. So that's yeah. it. And that's the, that is the tool. And then Obviously command apply, and program. then you just send it off to ChatGPT. Let's see how it works. And of course, this is a long one. It doesn't mean it's always long. Like, for example, we are about to launch uh, the integration with Lovable. So the prompts are much more concise because they need to be concise. They need to be to the point, but still the functionality is the same. It works on Gemini. It works on Claude. Today we launched Perplexity. There is a bunch of other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a pop-up that works on every website. It doesn't need to be kind of like a specifically integrated. And the other nice thing is that we also save. Anybody here uses Raycast? We love Raycast, by the way, it's the most amazing product. You should all go and check it out. Uh, uh, it's basically, you can have a clipboard history on your Mac. We basically give you the clipboard history of all your prompts across all devices and across all platforms, which is super handy to have when you are using multiple LLMs and multiple kind of like uh, places. So you see the lovable ones that we use for like testing. Uh, and you have different kind of like things that you can use. So yeah, that's essentially pretty prompt, right? 